All right, listener, you sent us down quite the rabbit hole this time with this deep dive. We're talking about the Rendlesham Forest Incident. Maybe you've heard of it. Oh, I'd say more than a few people are familiar with Rendlesham. Yeah, it's got a certain uh, reputation. It's considered Britain's Roswell, you know. That's a good way to put it. Mm. So for those who haven't gone down this particular rabbit hole, give us the rundown. What makes Rendlesham so fascinating? Well, it's one of those UFO sightings that's just got it all. You know, December 1980, right near two military bases, RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge. Okay, so right off the bat, we're not talking about some blurry lights over a cornfield. We're talking about trained military personnel witnessing something strange. Exactly. And it wasn't just a one-off thing. This went on for multiple nights. Multiple nights. Yeah. Okay, this is already getting intriguing. So what exactly were they seeing? That's the thing, right? It wasn't just like, hey, weird light in the sky. Some described it as this like red sun-like light. Others said it was metallic, even triangular shaped with different colored lights. Whoa, hold on. Triangular shapes. That's straight out of those old UFO drawings. Were there any reports of physical effects? Or was it mostly visual? Well, here's where it gets even weirder. There are reports of people experiencing nausea, disorientation. Like something just felt off, you know? Yeah, that's not your everyday light show. And we're talking about multiple witnesses, right? Both military and civilian. You got it. It wasn't just a couple of guys who had too much to drink. We're talking about a whole bunch of folks saying they saw or felt something out of the ordinary. Okay, so now I'm picturing the scene, right? It's the 80s, Cold War tensions high, and you've got all these people seeing these unexplainable things. I'm guessing this didn't exactly stay under wraps, did it? Not a chance, especially not with someone like Colonel Charles Halt involved. Colonel Halt, who's that? He was the deputy base commander at RAF Bentwaters at the time. So not exactly the type to believe in little green men, I'm guessing. No, and that's what makes it so interesting. Colonel Halt even wrote an official memo about the incident, put his name on it, you know? Wow. Okay, so this wasn't just some campfire story. This was serious. What did the memo say? It detailed everything, as much as he could. I mean, he couldn't exactly explain it, right? But he documented the sightings, the witness accounts, all of it. So what happened next? I mean, someone that high up writes a memo like that, people are going to notice, right? So the memo gets out. What happens? Does the whole thing just get swept under the rug? You'd think so, right? But no, not this time. They actually launched a full-on investigation. Whoa, really? Yeah. They brought in, like, the big guns? Yeah. What did that actually look like? Security personnel were sent out to the forest. They documented everything. And get this, they even found physical evidence. Hold on. Physical evidence. Don't leave me hanging. What kind of evidence are we talking about? Indentations in the ground damaged some of the trees. And this is right where the sightings happened. It wasn't just people seeing things. There was something physical there. Okay, so we've got strange lights. We've got physical traces. This is getting hard to explain away. Who else knew about the investigation? It wasn't just kept quiet either. The British authorities were brought in. It turned into this whole multinational thing. Wow. Okay. Two governments, multiple investigations. Someone was taking this seriously. So what were the conclusions? Did they ever figure out what these lights were? Here's the thing. Officially, they said it was probably a misidentified aircraft or some natural phenomenon. Come on, really? After all that? I mean, we're talking about trained military personnel here. What kind of explanations did they give? Well, there was talk of a nearby lighthouse, maybe even a planet that looked brighter than usual. But honestly, it doesn't really hold up when you think about the descriptions, those triangular shapes. I don't think a lighthouse is pulling those off. Yeah, I don't think Venus is flying in formation either. So what about the idea that it was a secret military project? Yeah. Maybe something experimental they weren't supposed to talk about. Right, that's the other big one. And it makes sense, right? It happened near military bases. Except there's no record of any experimental aircraft being tested in that area. And even if there were, it wouldn't explain the physical effects people reported. That nausea, the disorientation, that's not your average plane ride. You're telling me. So we've got explanations that don't really fit. Physical evidence, baffled investigators from two different countries, and it all happened back in 1980. This can't be where the story ends, can it? There's got to be more to the story. I mean, this is way too big to just disappear. You're right. This wasn't going to stay buried. So skip ahead to 2001. Okay, two decades later, what changed? Those classified documents about Rendlesham, they were released publicly. Whoa, hold on. Seriously, that's got to be a conspiracy theorist's dream come true. What was in those documents? Did we get any answers? Well, they definitely added more fuel to the fire. We're talking detailed accounts from the military personnel who were there, backing up everything that had been said, you know, unofficially. Okay, so not a cover-up then. 
Uh -huh. They weren't hiding what happened. No, not at all. In fact, they even admitted in the documents that they couldn't explain it. Get out. So even after all that time, they were still stumped. No wonder people are still talking about it. It's like the ultimate unsolved mystery. right? Exactly. And I think that's why Rendlesham still fascinates us. It's this clash between what we think we know and what we just don't. It makes you question everything a little bit. It really does. So when we think about those other big UFO incidents, Roswell, the Phoenix Lights, those huge events, how does Rendlesham measure up? You know, it's funny. They all happened in different places at different times, but they share this weird connection, right? They tap into this part of us that just has to know, what if there's more out there? It's that feeling when you look at the stars and realize just how much is out there, yeah. how much we don't know, and that maybe... Just maybe anything is possible. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or a skeptic. There's something about those stories. They make you think, make you wonder if we've got it all wrong. So listener, where do you stand on this whole thing? Was it a case of mistaken identity? Some top secret project? Or something truly out of this world? We may never have a definitive answer, and maybe that's okay. But one thing's for sure, Rendlesham reminds us that sometimes... The most intriguing mysteries are the ones we can never fully solve. They keep our curiosity alive, keep us looking up at the sky, wondering what else might be out there.